my sacrifice, not yours, that's mine. That's, of course, Creed. Dan Radio Style, hope everybody out there is having themselves a great day. Uh, kind of what I'm talking about, is it all about me? Because it's my sacrifice. You guys aren't sacrificing nothing. No, it's me. Me, I want to talk about me, I want to talk about I, right? Number one, am I, am I? Whatever the hell that Toby Keith song is. That would have been a good one, too. Yeah, I know. Hindsight 2020, bah, whatever the case is. Uh, so I wanted to kind of cover this topic, and uh, it actually popped up in kind of a very cool way. It had nothing to do with comments or anything like that, but actually had to do with one. I worked at the coffee shop this morning. I work every other Saturday and Sunday mornings as well, every Sunday. And it's something I do because I enjoy the interaction. I enjoy the neighborhood that I'm kind of a part of, right? I've been at the store for over eight years. I just, I know a lot of people. Been there a long time. They let me work one day a week. I get free coffee. It's kind of hard to really gripe at it. I, they, they pay me to hang out and talk to people I enjoy talking to. So whatever, sure, I'll do it. It's, it's fun times. But it made me think of the concept of many of us need to kind of take a little stock, a little ownership, a little, take a moment and look at our lives. Is it all about me? Is it all about them? Is it somewhere in the middle? Now, before I get too far into this, one thing I kind of want to bring up, and this will sort of be germane in a moment, if you will, but I wanted to ask any of you, have you ever changed your mind about something? Did you used to feel one way and you don't anymore? Did you used to maybe like a certain kind of food and now you don't? Did you used to enjoy doing a certain experience, but now... Ah, it's like pulling teeth to have to do it. Let me give a couple examples of these things personally. And this is nothing, nothing exciting, mind you, but just a couple examples to kind of get your brain thinking in the direction of, have we ever changed our mind? Have I ever gone from feeling one way to feeling another? Now, political is a good one, too, because as people tend to age, they tend to change politically. Again, I'm talking to more than half my, well, a little less than half my audience, I'm sorry, out there is from other countries other than the United States. So, you know, I can't just assume your politics are as jacked up as ours, but I would assume, in, for the most part, the Western world, which is a huge chunk of my audience, by the way, probably lives in similar circumstances. But again, just another example of where when you were younger, you might have felt one way, and now as you've gotten older, ah, it doesn't really work anymore. But my examples I used to love going to Disneyland, still do, mind you, I haven't been in years. But, I mean, like the idea of going to Disneyland style is wonderful, but the idea of standing in line and going on four rides while being at the park for eight, ten hours is ridiculous. Disneyland's great, but waiting in line for hours for a few moments of fun? Yeah, no, I don't know about that anymore. Candy. Loved candy when I was a kid. I could live on candy when I was a kid. Candy and pizza, for that matter, right? Could live on candy and pizza. Start the day off with some Skittles and finish the day off with some... I don't know, candy corns, whatever. They're like, now that sounds, actually candy corns is a great example of a specific kind of candy. After you eat about four of them, you're like, oh Lord, if I eat another one of these, I am going to barf. Again, not something that I, I, you know, when I was a kid, I could just eat that raw, nasty, sugary stuff and go to town on it. Soda. I don't drink soda anymore. It's too sweet. It's too crazy. It's not good for me. Used to love it. Could live on it when I was at Mountain Dew and Code Red and Code Blue and all that junk. And I lived on that stuff when I was in college. And donuts, another example of something. And I know a lot of you are thinking I'm crazy. I'm just sharing weird stuff with you guys. But donuts, man, I thought, I, seriously, this is going to be embarrassing. Maybe, I don't know. I, I did not realize until I started working at a grocery store when I was younger. I did not know that donuts were deep fried. I didn't know they were deep fried. I, I assumed they got cooked in an oven. I did not know they were stuck in just fat. So when I finally learned that you're taking bread and throwing it in fat and cooking it, I was like, ooh. So I don't eat donuts a whole lot anymore. Examples of things that I've changed my mind on, uh, because maybe I had better intelligence than I used to when I was younger, intelligence and just knowledge. Um, maybe it's just something that's not fun anymore. Maybe it's just something I can't really sustain, like the pizza and candy. Can't live on that. I'd die, right? So we've changed our minds in time. And the reason I bring that up is a lot of people, when we don't realize that we're off balance, when we don't realize that we're off kilter, and this is kind of more directed towards the people that are trying to get an X back, but certainly anybody maybe that's just trying to get anybody in general, we need to understand that people are, one, going to change their minds and are allowed to, and we should rejoice in them when that happens. It's a great thing when someone changes their mind. When they do it all the time, we call it wishy-washy, whatever, right? We got nicknames for that, but 
for the most part, right? If someone used to feel a certain way and because of circumstances, right? Things happened over and over and over. And now all of a sudden, ah, I don't know if I really like that anymore. And they change their mind. That's okay. All of us are allowed to do that. Everybody else outside of us is allowed to do that. So one thing I want everybody to keep in mind is just because somebody's changed their mind doesn't mean, one, they can't change it back. And two, when we're not being the best version of ourselves and someone used to be in love with us and used to enjoy hanging out with us and used to like talking to us and we somehow did something to change that and now they don't enjoy that, they're allowed to change their mind because you changed yourself. Now, again, the reason I'm doing this whole show and kind of circle back to the point, but this does directly tie in. Are we constantly thinking about ourselves? Are we constantly thinking about the other? Or are we somewhere in the middle? Now, if we're constantly selfish, if it's constantly all about me, it's all about me, myself, and I, then that makes it really hard for other people to be around you. It makes it really hard to have a relationship when it's always about you. When every time we get together, you're going to talk, 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 talk about you and never once really ask me how I'm doing or every time I try to interject, oh, yeah, no, so Brad called me the other day or, you know, or, or Samantha called me the other day and, and they're like, yeah, oh, that's great. I'm glad Samantha called. So anyway, Joyce called me and we talked forever and it was so wonderful right? It's all about you. And when it's all about you, it makes it really hard to have any sort of real relationship because ultimately relationships are a give and take, right? We spend a lot of time to try to work with each other. So we need to look at our situations. And certainly in the case of exes or even in the case of our SP right now, are we being needy? Because needy is a very selfish behavior. It's a very selfish behavior. Now, and I want to separate selfish from focused on improving self, right? When you're focused on yourself, on making things better for yourself, on being a better person, on being more loving, or more sensitive, more spiritual, more whatever, more happy, that's a good kind of selfish, always, always. And it starts there because those, these are behaviors that make yourself feel good. So that's great. And, and you know, honestly, if, if it makes you feel good to treat others poorly, which it does, um, that's one thing, but understand that there's a karmic price to pay when you're causing someone else to feel poorly for your happy thought, right? For your happy feeling. What that's called is energy taking. I, I've done shows on it. So there's four ways we generally take other people's energy. Uh, we're aloof, which means you're just kind of above them, right? You're uber intelligent and they're super stupid. So whatever they need to just look up to you and put you on a pedestal and there you will sit. There is the poor me when it's constantly your life is horrible and you want everybody to understand how horrible your life is. So they go, oh, I feel so bad for you. That's giving you energy. There's the um, the uh, qu the questioning. I I'm forgetting it. The aloof, the poor me, the interrogator. There's the interrogator that constantly uh, questions you to death, asks you everything under the sun. Where were you? What time were you? What did you guys do? What did you order? Did you guys have fun? Did you hang out? What did you do after? Did you talk in the car? Did you? And then just wear you down with questions. You're just like, oh my God, I wish I was dead. What do you want me to say? I'll say it. Yeah, I cheated on you. Frick, that's easier, right? So again, that's another way of taking energy. And the intim intimidator is when you're like, you know, kind of a brute, sort of intimidating, like by force, like just the very act, like, oh, he's going to steal my lunch money, right? Like that is another way we take energy. So when you're doing that, there is a karmic price to pay. And that is a very selfish behavior. And a lot of times that's why and how we can get in these selfish ruts. Now, understand if there's someone else that you're wanting to attract into your life, and you're behaving selfish most of the time, more than 50% at least, you're definitely not really someone like, if anyone asked me, oh, hey, so-and-so is behaving such a way, and I'm really interested in them, do you think it's a good idea? And if that person's selfish that they're describing it to in the way they behave and the way they act and what they say and talk about, no, because that's not healthy. So please understand that if you're behaving that way, if it's all about you, why didn't they call me back? Why didn't they text me back? Why didn't they do this? Why didn't they do that? This needs to happen for my sake, for me. If these are the things you're thinking about, you need to back the truck up. You need to be like putting <laughs> right and then that deep, 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 right? 
Like that's the that's how that night just play out. You need to back the truck up. And we need to reevaluate what's going on, right? So again, being overly selfish, not so good. On the other side of it, if everything is about them, constantly them, we're putting them up on the pedestal. Everything we do is for them. We're not paying attention to our studies. We're not paying attention to our health. We're not paying attention to our well-being. We're not paying attention to making ourselves better. So in fact, you have zero selfish. And and in fact, you have zero of the positive kind of selfish that I just talked about, right? And maybe you're even in that place where like, I just can't believe they changed their minds. They're allowed to first off. And second off, if your whole life is them, then you're not bringing a whole lot to the table either. Again, not a healthy relationship. If someone was to approach me and say, ah, okay, I like this girl, but here's how she is. She just loves me and worships me and just thinks I'm the greatest thing on the ever since sliced bread does whatever I ask. Huh. I would back them up for a second and say, as much as I'm sure that's wonderful, understand this is not a healthy relationship. And at some point, either A, she's going to change her mind and take you off the pedestal and then you're screwed. Or B, this is not a healthy behavior. And at some point, it's going to bother you that this person has no life of their own. They have nothing that interests them when you go, so what was your day all about? And you're like, well, I thought about you. And then I was like getting ready to make food for you. And then I thought about how you and I could be together. And you just be like, oh, man, really? Like, do you have nothing intelligent to add to this at all? So again, being completely on that side of it. Yeah, not good either. It's a balance. And the reason I brought up the coffee shop is that is a great way in my mind, for me, in my world, to kind of make sure I'm out there balancing and helping others and being a part of others and just trying to spread goodwill, good cheer, and having it not be about me, right? And again, I work a lot of customer service stuff. So that's just, you know, most of my jobs. But when I come home, or even sometimes I'll be honest, well, like, uh, well you know, when I come home and just start focusing on the tasks at hand at home, I don't want to deal with other things outside of me. It becomes a very selfish time for me. And healthily so for the most part, right? It's just time for me because I I spend a lot of time doing for others and it's great and it's very rewarding and I enjoy my life and I enjoy what I do. But there's the balance of time for me. What did I learn today? What what happened today? What what wasn't good? What can I do differently? How could I have handled that situation differently? What would I like to experience tomorrow? What would I like to experience a week from now, a year from now, five years from now? Again, you need to spend some of that time kind of focused on you. And maybe if you're busy and you got kids and all that stuff, right? They're constantly yip, 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 right behind you. Maybe it's why you're stirring the, the noodles for their macaroni and cheese, right? At least you're having thoughts for the moment while they're screaming in the background, torturing the poor dog, right? You're like, huh, yeah, so... um. Yeah, today I could have probably been a little more patient with the kids. Oh, God, it's bubbling. Ah, Right? So, again, we want it to be a balance. And as I've talked about before, this is a lot of this is self-reflection. This journey is about improving ourselves. If we're looking higher and onward, a man's reach should exceed his grasp or what's a heaven for. I think it was Browning that said that. It's a beautiful quote. It's one I kind of live by. So it should be out there beyond ah, your reach but it should be attainable to a degree. So we want to constantly make sure we're trying to reach. We're trying to do new things. We're paying attention to what's going on internally. We want to make sure there's a balance between just me and just you. We want that balance. We want an interaction. We want a healthy relationship because that's what really we're all looking for. We may be chasing after Sam, our ex, or Joe, the guy around the corner that doesn't even know who I am, or Veronica. Oh, Veronica. Who knows what we're trying to accomplish? But again, we want to keep things in balance. It's about you. It's about them. It's about all of us. The community I keep talking about here, even on the channel, with all the people that watch and listen and comment below. It's all about those things. It's the giving and taking. It's the helping and and learning from. It's the teacher, student, student, teacher kind of concept. There's a thing called law of one, which maybe one day I'll get into, but it's like super deep, esoteric, metaphysical, crazy stuff. Super awesome though. Law of one, very good. If any of you are crazy and want to read into some very heavy metaphysical stuff, law of one, it's good stuff. Or law of raw, it's also called. But look it up. There was a 
site, uh, forget the name of the institute or something or other, you'll find it. You'll find stuff on it. It's amazing. Anyway, totally off topic. Again, my whole point of this is to try to work on being balanced, try to work on being like the giver and the taker, right? And trying to also pay attention where we're not being healthy in these choices. And again, to circle back around, people are allowed to change their mind, you included. Just because you believed something a year ago and you're so strongly devout to it, but now after spending a year working on yourself, maybe you have a different view about things. Maybe ketchup is no longer your favorite condiment. Maybe maybe you're really fine with just maybe a little barbecue. Maybe, maybe a little mustard. Who knows? But yeah, ketchup, I don't know. Just don't really like it anymore. That's okay. Mayonnaise, ah, it's kind of gross. Don't like it. Once I learned how it was made, there's another example. Yeah, no, don't put any of that on my sandwich. I'll find something else to put on there. You can leave mayonnaise off, please. And I know a lot of people are like, I love mayo. And I know, that's fine. That's totally awesome. I, again, it was just one of those things. I took a nutrition class when I was younger, very young, and that really affected foods that I was going to allow myself to eat. But in the end, it's probably done me a lot of service. So hopefully this all kind of helps, kind of gets us thinking in the right direction. Now, I want to say I'm going out with a song that's fun, and it's along the selfish lines, and I'd never heard it before, but it's actually, I thought, there's one, it's kind, of, it's kind of a catchy tune, but two, it's a little bit funny. Anyway, it's by Jake Miller. It's called Selfish Girls, Dan Radio Style. Call my voicemail, and I'm going to start singing. This song's for selfish girls. They want the whole wide world. They just want everything. And they cry when the sky ain't blue. This song's for selfish girls. They want the whole wide world. I give him everything. And there ain't nothing I can do. <laughs> yeah. 